In the last session, we wrote all the action lines required to log into the car rental sample application. Now we're ready to run the test and have a look at the results that Test Architect reports upon completion of the run. If you've been following along in this Getting Started series, you should now have a login test module designed to launch car rental, run a basic test of its login function with a single test case, and then close the application. You should also have the two interface entities, Login and Welcome, that support the interactions our test requires. In Test Architect, open the Login Test module. There are a number of ways to launch a test. We'll launch ours by clicking Execute on the toolbar. The Execute Test dialog box appears and presents us with a number of options that determine such things as how the test will be run, where it will be run, and how the results will be handled. For this run, let's select Screenshot Recording and accept the defaults associated with it. Now click the Execute button in the dialog box. The automated test begins to execute on our local machine as first indicated by the appearance of the playback monitor and toolbar. It starts up car rental, enters values into its login window, clicks the login button, checks for the presence of the welcome window, then finally closes the application. Upon completion of the test run, Test Architect compiles the results and displays a results page automatically. The top of the page displays general information about the test run, including the test start time, duration, test platform, and environment. Below that, a summary presents the final test results, along with the test case by test case tally of the passed and failed checkpoints. In this case, of course, the test consists only of a single test case with one checkpoint. Now click the Result Details tab. Result Details presents us with a detailed audit trail of each action line's execution. In the Result Toolbar, click Options and ensure that Show Recorded Screenshots is selected. Now, because we enabled screenshot recording earlier, the log includes thumbnails of screen captures taken just prior to and following each user interface action. Click on any thumbnail to see it in the screenshot viewer and from there we can navigate through all of the screenshots. In addition to the Test Architect debugger, which we haven't yet explored, it's a great resource when you need to quickly get to the bottom of why your test or application is not behaving as expected. While we've covered the basics you need to get started, there's a good deal more to Test Architect test execution and results, and you can learn about all of the features and options from Test Architect help. With this, we've completed the process of developing and running a test in Test Architect. In our next and last session of the Getting Started video series, we'll do a bit of refining of our test procedure. We'll learn how to create our own actions, a core component of Test Architect's action-based testing framework.